so last time we had discussed a couple of applications of relative motion in 2d okay including the uh, situation of relative velocity of vertically falling rain with respect to a moving observer so we'll continue from that point onwards today This is session number three of relative motion, and with this we should conclude relative motion today. The next chapter we will start Ishan is going to be circular motion after relative motion is completed. So in this track we will do circular motion, and then um, after that center of mass. Okay, so we are already familiar with all these definitions that relative position is the difference of individual positions or absolute positions. The relative displacement is the difference of the absolute or ground frame displacements. So relative velocity is like this and accordingly relative acceleration like this. So now let us understand some typical examples of the applications of these equations and concepts. So we'll start with again a problem based on that relative motion between rain and a moving observer type of situation, but only this time the difference is that the rain is falling in some slanted way like this. So the velocity of the rain in the ground frame only because of some wind or strong breeze or something like that the rain is falling slanted some velocity and person moving horizontally at some velocity bm so at an instant when the man walks at four kilometers per hour as shown. In fact, let's put it less in. So he walks at three kilometers per hour as shown. Okay. The rain appears to fall vertically as observed by him. Now, if he starts running, in the same direction, but at six kilometers per hour, he's barely jogging or something you can say, the rain now appears to be slanted at 37 degrees to the vertical. In his frame, in his reference frame, okay. So we have to find the speed of rain with respect to ground frame. And we have to also find the angle theta at which the rain's velocity in ground frame is slanted with respect to the vertical. Okay, so just try out this question, people. We'll discuss. So basically, you have to use this concept over here that relative velocity of the rain with respect to the moving man is the actual velocity of the rain in the ground frame minus the velocity of the man with respect to ground. So we've discussed this kind of example before. Only previously, 
the the situation we took the rain was actually falling vertically and now as the diagram shows the rain itself is falling slanted because of some breeze or air a breeze or wind okay and that's why the situation is slightly different so try to follow the language of the question carefully and understand how you will apply this concept over here okay i will discuss in just some time so you can implement this relative velocity concept over here either by making a vector diagram using the three vectors involved the relative velocity and the individual velocities in ground frame or you can also employ the unit vector notation the i cap j cap notation in component form basically both methods should be equally feasible over here okay, just try it out
manav unfortunately the answer is not correct just check your uh, method of solving once more okay so i will start by giving you a hint about how the vector diagram looks so in the first situation see what is given in the first situation it is given that when the man is walking at 3 kilometers per hour the relative velocity of the rain with respect to the man appears to be vertical this information is given to us so that basically means that if this is the actual velocity of the rain in the ground frame when neither we know the magnitude of the rain's velocity nor we know the direction as of now it is inclined at some theta which is unknown and the magnitude is unknown but we know that when the person is walking at Three kilometers per hour, horizontally. That time we know that the relative velocity appears to be vertical. So the vector diagram. So this angle will be ninety degrees. So this one's magnitude we don't know, but we know that it is vertical. And this one we know complete in terms of magnitude and direction. so this is one vector diagram which will give us some information okay and in the second aspect of this situation what he is doing is is changing his own velocity of moving his own velocity is changing the range velocity is remaining the same as it was in the previous diagram so this angle theta this is the same but this time his own speed has become a running speed it become like this now it becomes 6 kilometers per hour because he is now running at this so this is known and again the relative velocity of the rain is not known in terms of magnitude but it is known what angle it is making so this time the relative velocity of the rain it appear to be slanted like this so this is given that this angle and it is slanted at 37 degrees so this is known but the magnitude of this vector is also not known the magnitude of this vector is also not known this angle is also so use these two diagrams so you can either con convert this into a component form equation or you can use the diagrams itself try to use the geometry of the diagrams okay So use this as a hint and try to solve the problem.
<coughs> okay, now let's see how we'll solve this. Now in this diagram, let's say this is y. Okay, this and this is x. So you can see from this diagram above that x is equal to three. Therefore, velocity of the rain with respect to sorry, velocity of the rain in the ground frame. We'll have a magnitude of three square plus y square, and theta will be equal to tan inverse of three divided by some y. These are both still unknowns. Okay, from this diagram you can see that. So now substitute that here. So if this is three, then for this we can see that. This length will become six minus x. It is also three, and this is y. So here, for this triangle, we can now see that three divided by y is equal to tan thirty-seven, which is three by four. So that means y is equal to four. So now we can see that. Velocity of the rain has a magnitude of five kilometers per hour in the ground frame, and theta is equal to tan inverse of three by four, or thirty-seven degrees again with respect to the vertical. Yes, very good. That's correct. Manav. Okay. So you'll actually realize that these two triangles are congruent. It just so happens that because the bisector, these two triangles they are congruent triangles. But even if they are not being congruent triangles, the method of solving would have been the same. Just the values would have been different. Okay. So your vector algebra has to be pretty spot on in this type of situation. You can also do this by using component algebra. If you take x and y system like this, then you can see in the first case you can take the velocity of the man in component form to be three i cap, velocity of the rain in ground frame to be some x i cap minus y j cap. So the relative velocity of the rain with respect to the man is x minus three i cap minus y j cap. And this is meant to be vertical. So if it is vertical, it implies that x minus three should be zero. So x should be equal to three. Okay. Now in this situation, the velocity of the rain is again x i cap minus y j cap. So that has now become three i cap minus y j cap. Where y we have to calculate. The velocity of the man has changed to Six i cap. So the relative velocity of the rain with respect to the man is now minus three i cap minus y j cap. This is at thirty-seven to the vertical. So that means y so x by three. This should be equal to. Not x three by y. So. so this velocity now like this. Where this is the unknown quantity y, and this quantity is three because it's along the negative x direction. So this is the angle which is given to us as thirty-seven. So three by y is equal to tan thirty-seven. So from that you will get y is equal to four. So this is the other way of doing it using component algebra. But as I said, like generally speaking, I find it more convenient in a problem like this just to use the vector diagram. It gives a lot of clarity. So just make a quick note of this. Make sure you understand all the steps. Discuss with me in case of any doubts, and we'll discuss another part of this question also. 
sir. Yes. Why in the first part uh, B R M is vertical? That is given in the question, na, right? That when he is walking at three kilometers per hour, the rain appears to be vertical. That is part of the condition given in the question. Understand, na? No? See the statement of the original ah, question. Yes, sir. This is what it was given to us. That when he walks at three, the rain appears to be falling vertically as observed by him. Whereas if he starts running in the same direction. Ah. But at six, now the rain appears to be slanted at thirty seven. So, can you scroll the page down? Okay, people. So hope this solution is clear. Okay. Now, in the same situation, in the same problem, we'll do a second part. If the man turns around and walks at one kilometer per hour, very slow speed. Okay. So the rain is still falling like this, like we've just calculated above. But now the person, he turns around and starts walking in the opposite direction at one kilometer per hour. Then find the magnitude of the relative velocity of the rain with respect to him now and the slant angle with respect to the vertical.
Yes, very good, Manav. Once again, your answer is correct. Okay. So once again, you can see that you can very effectively use the vector diagram method if you want. Okay. So you know the velocity of the rain now. We have already calculated this is five kilometers per hour in magnitude. We have seen that this angle is 37. This angle is 37 degrees. Now, when he's walking the other way, the person's velocity is, let's say, like this. Maybe this much or something. So this time, the velocity of the man is one kilometer per hour in this direction. So the relative velocity will become like this. This vector will be So what we can do here to calculate this vector, both in terms of magnitude and direction, we can see that previous, <coughs> excuse me, people, this was three kilometers per hour. And this is four, this vertical part. Now this is one. So for this, we can see that this side is 4. And this total side is also 4. So this triangle is very easy to identify. There's a 45 degree right angle triangle. Where the magnitude of this vector becomes Four root two. So the relative velocity of the rain with respect to the person now has a magnitude of four root two or approximately four into one point four one. And is at forty five degrees to the vertical. So this is the easiest way to handle the question if you ask me. Okay. However, you can always use component algebra also and you can do it this way that 3i cap minus 4j cap and now the velocity of the man has become minus i cap.
Okay. Now, next we'll look at another scenario of relative motion. Another situation. A swimmer or a motorboat moving in flowing water. So, for example, if the velocity of a swimmer with respect to still water that is velocity of the swimmer with respect to the water okay. and he or she swims in water flowing at a velocity of vw then the net velocity of the swimmer in the ground frame, not in the water frame, but in the ground frame, that becomes this particular formula. You will see this is the same formula that we have studied in relative motion, only now it is written in an inverse kind of order. Okay, we have seen that velocity of a swimmer with respect to water can be written as the velocity of the swimmer in ground frame minus the velocity of the water in ground frame. If I just reverse this equation, then this quantity in terms of these two other quantities becomes like this. So this is the formula that we have to apply when these two quantities are given. Okay, so if the velocity of the swimmer with respect to still water is a given quantity and the flow velocity of the water is a given quantity, then the unknown quantity, this can be calculated by using this formula. So this kind of situation can happen both in one dimensional as well as two dimensional kind of situations. So we'll discuss some typical examples of problems. <clears throat> okay, so let's start with a simple example. So this is the top view of a river which has a straight section with water flowing at a uniform velocity. It's more like an artificial canal which has been constructed in this manner. 
the velocity of the water so this is the top view of a canal kind of situation with water flowing uniformly at a speed of Four kilometers per hour. Let's make it five. It will be easier to do the calculation. Now a motorboat starts from this position P at time t equal to zero, moving downstream for a certain amount of time, and then at the position Q, it makes an U-turn. continues back here crosses the original position sometime t okay. so a motor boat b which moves at a uniform speed of 15 kilometers per hour with respect to still water so if the water had been still then it would be moving at a uniform speed of 15 kilometers per hour starts from the point p at t equal to 0 okay going downstream for 30 minutes and then takes a 180 degree turn at the point q and returns to p at some time t equal to capital t so we have to find first of all the velocity of the motor boat with respect to ground while moving downstream while coming back upstream total distance total time okay neglect the time taken to make the 180 degree turn assume that it turns instantaneously only hardly takes any time for that okay so this is again that type of question where we'll use this concept that this is the velocity of the boat with respect to still water okay. and this is the flow velocity of the water so the velocity of the boat with respect to ground frame will become this relative velocity with respect to still water plus this so just use this concept here and it's a one dimensional application of this so it's quite uh, easy in comparison
right very good uh, shayan and uh, adinath your answers are correct okay the total journey time will be 1 hour and 30 minutes okay okay so we can quickly understand this so in the downstream part of the motion you can see that the velocity of the boat as seen by a ground frame observer this will become plus 15 plus 5 so 20 km per hour because the velocity of the boat with respect to the water is plus 15 and the velocity of the water is plus 5 there is in the part where the boat is moving upstream here what will happen is because the water is flowing downstream so in this part the velocity of the boat with respect to the water is minus 15 if you consider the direction so velocity of boat with respect to the water with sign convention will become minus 10 so basically you can say that sorry the velocity of the boat in the ground frame so this is 10 km per hour upstream so without sign convention we write it's like this okay so obviously here if the boat starts from the point p at t equal to 0 and at 30 minutes reaches this point q then this distance d will be equal to 20 km per hour into 30 minutes that's 10 km so the distance downstream is 10 km okay now from t equal to 30 minutes to t equal to capital t the boat is again covering a distance but this time with a speed of 10 km per hour into so that distance is 10 km okay. right is in hours like this okay. so t you can see is 1.5 hours or 90 minutes and the total distance covered will be 2d so that is 20 km so the boat travels at 20 km per hour for 10 km in 30 minutes downstream and then return 20 km at 10 km per hour to another 10 km in 1 hour so total distance is 20 km total time 1.5 hours or 90 minutes no so the idea is the velocity the relative velocity of the boat is with respect to the water so the frame in which <clears throat> the boat is having that velocity of 20 km per hour sorry 15 km per hour in that frame the water is stationary na no? you are in the water's frame so in that frame the water is stationary 
at rest. That's why it's still water. So for example, if you're floating along with the water, in your frame, the water is still, and you will see the boat moving at 15. That is the logic of that statement, that with respect to still water. So, yes. So, when the boat comes upstream, yes, you do it for the distance, like. How did it has to come the same distance. Huh? So earlier we had calculated the distance, huh? 10 kilometers. You understand now? Huh? It has to return back to the point it started from. Huh? So if it started from P and went to Q through a distance of D, which was how much? 10 kilometers. Because P to Q, it traveled at 20 kilometers per hour in ground frame. And the time was half an hour given. So, sir, here you wrote 10 into T minus 30 for distance. No, okay, that, is, so that is 10 kilometers per hour, and the distance itself is 10 kilometers. Okay, okay. Yeah, Okay, now let's look at a more interesting situation of this kind of application of relative motion where two dimensional vector analysis comes into the play. So we have the similar kind of situation, a river which is kind of straight in this section, or you can think of it like a canal, it's flowing uniformly. But this time we will talk about a swimmer who's trying to swim across the river. Okay, but in the process, we'll also end up drifting downstream. So, this is again the top view. With a flow velocity. 
of magnitude this time three kilometers per hour. Okay. Now, a swimmer orients his body perpendicular to the flow and starts swimming from here at t equal to zero. But because of the river current, he will end up drifting like this. And he will be, while he's trying to swim perpendicular, but he will end up drifting and he will reach somewhere here at time capital T. So the width of the river is given to us as 800 meters. Now, the swimmer S okay, swims at a uniform speed of four kilometers per hour with respect to still water. Now, if he swims across such that his motion, that is his swimming motion, relative to the water is in a direction perpendicular to the flow of water. Okay. Then find his net velocity with respect to the ground plane. Find the time taken to swim across and the distance drifted downstream. So that distance is x. So that is this distance over here. How much he ends up drifting downstream because of the river current. Okay. So let's try out this question next. Just try to understand the question and see how you can use vector analysis to again understand this application that the velocity of the swimmer in the ground frame should become the velocity of the swimmer with respect to still water plus the flow velocity. This is in ground frame. Okay, this is should be with respect to the still water. This is the flow velocity. Yes, very good, Adinath.
okay yes manav that's correct so let's uh, clarify the answers so in this situation what we will observe is that the swimmer is orienting his body in such a way that his velocity with respect to still water so his relative velocity with respect to the water remains in this direction that is of magnitude Four kilometers per hour, whereas the water is continuously flowing at three kilometers per hour. So the net velocity of the swimmer in the ground frame becomes the vector sum of these two vectors, which are now perpendicular to each other. So it becomes this diagonal. this becomes the velocity of the swimmer as seen from the ground frame point of view so we'll end up reaching a point over here at time t we started swimming from here at t equal to 0 so we can do this by component algebra or we can again use geometry and simple trigonometry kind of relations okay so if you see this velocity of the swimmer is the velocity of the swimmer with respect to water plus velocity of the water so in this case the magnitude of velocity of the swimmer because they are perpendicular to each other it becomes square root of 25 so 5 km per hour and that angle at which he ends up moving with tan inverse of 4 by 3 or 3 degrees so this is one way we can solve the question okay so now we can also see that this width of the river is 800 meters okay so if his net displacement is s okay, then we can see that so Sine theta is equal to eight hundred divided by s. So his net displacement is five hundred. Sorry, is one thousand meters. One kilometer at a speed of five kilometers per hour. So therefore, the time taken. Twelve minutes. Okay, and this horizontal drift so is one way we can do this. or we can also use component algebra so we can also do it this way that the velocity of the swimmer with respect to the water is 4 j cap the velocity of the water is 3 i cap so velocity of the swimmer in ground frame is 3 i cap plus 4 j cap so the displacement vector will become velocity into time so the displacement vector which is some unknown x i cap Plus 800 j cap would be equal to 3 t i cap plus 4 t j cap. So x is equal to 3 t and 800 is equal to, but this is 800 meters. And this is 4 kilometers per hour into t.
from this equation. And then substitute that over here. Okay, so these are two separate approaches of doing the question. The component algebra approach of handling the vector calculation or the geometrical approach, which is the one I've done before.
okay so people hope this question is clear now moving on to another interesting case of this type of situation now next example we have the same situation a swimmer has to swim across a river which is flowing at comparatively high velocity but this time the difference is that the swimmer has to reach he has to swim in such a way that he reaches the point which is perpendicularly opposite to his starting point so his net velocity with respect to ground frame his actual path should not be diagonal but it should be perpendicular to the velocity of the flow so in order to do that he have to orient his body and is swimming with respect to the water in this sort of manner if he sets off swimming in this sort of a direction then because of the drift of the water what will happen is that he will end up moving in this path so if he starts at t equal to 0 such that his swimming is at an angle theta with respect to the flow velocity so the width of the river this time we take it as 1 km now the swimmer swims at 12 km per hour with respect to still water and the river water flows at a speed of 6 km per hour exactly half of that one. so first of all find theta such that the net velocity of the swimmer in the ground frame is along the perpendicular to the direction of flow find this net velocity and the time t yes that's correct manam
Yes, very good. Manav and Adinath, your answers are correct. So let's understand the vector diagram now. So what we want in this situation is that the net velocity should be in the perpendicular direction. Okay. Whereas the flow velocity of the river is equal to six kilometers per hour in this direction. So the relative velocity with respect to the water, it will have to be oriented in such a direction that the vector sum of these two, you apply parallelogram law. This vector sum, which is the diagonal of the parallelogram, will have to be like this. So if this angle is theta, you can just easily construct this. You can see that the condition for this to happen is that 12 sine theta should be equal to 6. So theta should be equal to 30 degrees. And the net velocity become 12 cos theta. Is six root three kilometers per hour. So now, having done this, the rest is very easy to calculate the time taken because so now this net displacement. The one kilometer width of the river is covered at a speed of six root three. Okay, so this way we can do the calculation. Okay, so these are the typical type of questions for your application of relative motion. Okay. So hope this example is clear. Let me know in case of any doubts or questions we'll discuss. Okay. Now we'll conclude relative motion and today's session with one additional interesting type of example. We will look at this equation of the relative motion of two projectiles okay. or two objects moving under the action of gravity. So let's say what we have got is From here, a certain object, let's say A, 
is dropped at time t equal to zero. If it falls vertically, and this height from which it is dropped. Let us say eighty meters. Okay. Now, from somewhere here, which is at a distance of sixty meters, okay. another particle d, it has to be projected. At fifty meters per second, at some angle theta, at t equal to zero. So, if the particle b projected at time t equal to zero, hits a. Some time t. Find the angle theta at which it should be projected, and the time t at which it will hit. So this particle is supposed to go on a path like this. It is supposed to come down on a path like this, and they collide at some time t. An a is here and b is here. so now the thing is we will solve this by projectile motion uh, by relative motion okay so we'll try to solve it by analyzing the motion of let's say b relative to a or we can also take the motion of a relative to b that will also work but basically using the concept of relative motion The value of g is 10 meters per second square. Though you will actually not require it, the answer will be independent of whatever the value of g is.
Yes, very good. That's correct. Okay. So what we can do here is that if we define a coordinate frame like this, okay. So we can see that the initial velocity of A is zero and the acceleration of A is minus G J cap. Whereas the initial velocity of B is minus 50 cos theta i cap plus 50 sine theta j cap. Okay. And the acceleration of B is zero. Oh, sorry, is minus g j cap. Okay. So from this information, we can see that B's motion relative to A. This is something very interesting, okay? The initial velocity of B with respect to A, that will be this one, it will be minus 50 cos theta I cap plus 50 sine theta J cap. But what about the acceleration of B with respect to A? That will be zero, because in the ground frame, they have common acceleration. So this gives us a very interesting aspect about the motion. This fact that the relative acceleration is zero, this implies that the motion of B in A's frame, what type of motion it is? Can you tell me what type of motion it will be if the acceleration is zero? Uniform. Yes, very good. It is a uniform motion because its velocity is uniform. Right? So it's a uniform motion. That is, it is at constant velocity. So therefore, while that object A is falling, imagine you are attached to the frame of A. So you don't see A falling. Instead, what you see is B that was located here. It is moving towards you and coming and hitting you. So at t equal to zero, b is here and the ground is here. And at some time t, in your frame, what has happened? The ground has come up here and b has also come up here. So the ground has not come up all the way there. Because you're still mid -air. So at some time t, the ground is somewhere here. But b has reached all the way here. So in order for this to happen, the direction of B's velocity should be along the hypotenuse of this triangle. So this theta should be according to, so this is a straight line motion. Okay. So this is 80 meters and this is 60 meters. So you can see that tan theta should be equal to four by three. So theta should be 53 degrees. Okay. So velocity of B relative to A will become minus 50 I cap plus 40 J cap in meters per second. And in time T, The displacement of B with respect to A would have become minus 60 I cap plus 80 J cap. This is the displacement you can see from the initial to final position. So the time should obviously be Two seconds. So you can also do this by solving the individual motion in the ground frame and all that, but it will be quite a bit more complicated. And you can see this is a very effective method of solving the relative motion or solving anything to do with two projectiles, two objects moving under the action of gravity. If you want to solve by relative motion, things become very easy because the relative acceleration is zero. So the relative motion between them is a uniform motion or motion with uniform velocity. Okay. 
so we will hope this question and this aspect is clear to all of you this concept from here okay. so with that we complete relative motion concepts and examples for now next lecture we will discuss doubts and some questions also additional questions from module let's see varma etc i will also send you a worksheet to complete uh, over the week so that you are confident with relative motion and then next we will start with the chapter of circular motion so you can look that up also circular motion uh, either from resnick halliday or ncrt you can go through the theory part once and hc uh, verma also has the basic derivations and things in brief so you can refer to that also so that's it for today's session people wish you all the best have a nice day thanks for attending thank you sir bye sir bye people bye sir thank you thank you sir bye sir thank you sir Thank you.